Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and Takara Tomi got a happy whack of lead time before releasing Deluxe Windblade domestically in their own Transformers Legends line, which means two things. Her colors ended up far closer to those of her first IDW miniseries, and she got released as part of a trio of female Autobot Deluxes who all received some legit box art attention. Check out how she's vigorously jamming her sword handle down towards her crotch. Well worth the wait. Regenzu Window Bureido adds some saturated life to the toy's palette, pulling in some deep translucent blue for the cockpit, and basically changing the main color of the jet mode from black to bright red. This is a simple switch up that does a ton for Windblade, particularly in making her vehicle form's color layout base itself around the fact that two planks of red leg paneling are going to be on the top side center no matter what. A great deal of this is done through producing pieces like the wings in red plastic, while many of the black bits on them are paint apps this time around. There are also a pair of bright yellow strips near the cockpit that kinda look like alt mode optics of some sort. But colors aside, this is still Deluxe Windblade. She still has a sword sheath along her underbelly that kinda doesn't fit in super well. She still has a hole through the middle of her jet mode that the aforementioned sword sheath kinda fits in but kinda doesn't. Her VTOL propellers can rotate forwards. Everything holds together alright, but not exponentially better than the most solid Hasbro Windblades that I've handled. For the real build quality discussion, let's get to the mode where it was the most in contention. Those damnable hinged heels and their various other leg-based foldy rotatey bits are honestly not night and day on the Japanese release of Windblade. I believe they feel a bit more solid overall, but there aren't any new locking mechanisms, so you still got to avoid pushing down on Windblade's feet when you're posing her on your display surface of choice. It's a small improvement, but keep your expectations realistic here. However, as far as her color layout and paintwork, massive improvement in my opinion. Granted, I love the Sarah Stone artwork that most of this is inspired by, and extra love the fact that Takara Tomy was able to have that inform the colors of their own Deluxe Windblade release. But the extra red on the wings adds the same touch of life that it did in her alt mode, and while the switch up of red and black on the thighs and pelvis admittedly orients her red parts to a more humanized costume layout of gloves, boots, and etc., it also connects her a whole lot more to her strongest fiction and media presence. There are a few other change-ups, like a slight diminishing of metallic blue as an accent color, but let's not delay in getting to the enormous alterations in facial deco that almost makes this Japanese release look like it has an all-new head sculpt. I mean, it doesn't. But this looks so much more like the Windblade I grew endeared to in IDW's post-Dark Cybertron comic era. While I think the Hasbro color choices are entirely fine as well, the layout and application are both much better on Takara Tomy's version. It's clean and vivid and makes her eyes look alive, man! Unfortunately, my copy has got two big blemishes in a splotch of white on the inside of her black cheek plate and a splotch of metallic blue over some of the bits that should be white beside her right eye. Both are probably fixable, but it was a killjoy to hunt this down on the secondary market and find myself greeted with some paint screw-ups on the biggest paint feature of the figure. Oh! Also! Her sword is more translucent pink than translucent purple! The pink plays well with her much heavier use of red, while the purple totally worked with Hasbro's darker take. That said, I think translucent purple looks way more like legitimate lasers, and that makes me a whole lot happier. Deluxe Windblade is still a neat but flawed figure with just enough thin parts to feel delicate and just enough play in her heels and lower leg components to need a light touch when posing her on any display surface, but Takara Tomy's Legends version is by far the visual superior as far as I'm concerned. Even with a couple blemishes, her facial paint deco is an absolute draw, and it's my understanding that my flawed experience with it is a definite minority. Basically, if you want a Windblade because you like her in the comics, this is currently THE Windblade to get. Try not to pay a big premium though, because at her core, she's still deluxe Windblade, for better and for worse. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and I really don't know if I'm ever going to track down the Combiner Hunters 3-pack anytime soon. So, will there forever be a gap in my otherwise comprehensive Windblade coverage? Only within the future does the answer to that reside.